Lord, I pray for revelation. I pray that you're going to speak to our lives tonight. We bless you and we worship you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's lift our Bibles together and let's make our declaration tonight. Okay, let's go together. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is my Lord. To the glory of God, the Father. Amen. Let's get our seats. Hallelujah. Amen. So straight, let's go to the word of God. We are reading from the book of Daniel. I believe God is going to speak to our lives tonight. Because I've listened to God and he's spoken. Hallelujah. Okay. We will do this chapter. Daniel chapter number three. But not the entire chapter. We will do a few phases I will, as I will guide you. Because there is something I want us to get from this chapter. And then we will also read the book of Isaiah. Chapter number 43, 1 and 3. Then the last reading would come from the book of John, chapter number 1, verse 12. From the book of Daniel, I want us to do this verse. Verse 19. Daniel 3, verse 19. This is the story of the three Hebrew boys. Sorry, the four Hebrew boys who had been taken captive from the, from the land of Judah by King Nebuchadnezzar to the land of Babylon. And I'll give you the story as we continue. Verse 19 reads this. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression of his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they hit Fane seven times more than it was usually. Then we move to verse, we'll give you the next verse that you read. Verse 29. Verse 29 to 30. Then I'll give you the story. Verse 29 and 30. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a ship, because there is no other God who can deliver like this. Then the last verse, then, king, then the king said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 to 3. Isaiah 43, verses 1 to 3. But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burnt, nor shall the flames scorch you. And the last verse, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba, in your place. The last reading, John chapter 1 verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12. There it is. Let's read together this one. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Amen. Praise the name of God. Tonight, I thank God for this time that is given me to share to you and even to you online viewers. I pray that tonight as we share the word of God, the Lord shall speak to your life. He shall meet you at the point of your need. Praise the Lord. So, as I was waiting on the Lord, this is what he gave me. 
Jesus Christ makes the difference. That's my topic. Jesus Christ makes the difference. As we all know that we are in the theme of in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. That's our October theme. In Christ Jesus. Now, I got this reading from the book of Daniel. And here, we see King, King Nebuchadnezzar, he, the Bible says he besieged the nation of Judah. And he took captives. He took people as slaves to Babylon. So that they may serve as slaves in that nation. So now, as, as the, the, the men of king were taking people, this is what the king commanded his eunuchs to, to tell, to do to the people of, to the people that he had taken slaves from the nation of Babylon and from the nation of Judah. And he said, take me four, four young men from Judah who are wise, who are very sharp, who are full of wisdom, who we can make young men that can be serving in the palace to the king. You will get that from the first chapter. And then you find he got these young four men, Daniel, Meshach, Abednego, and Shadrach. He got those young men. And as you continue reading, you find a place came, a time came, and in chapter 3, the Bible says that the eunuchs, this, this, the, the leaders, the leaders of the nation, they gathered together and they told the king, now make yourself something, a big God that you can be worshipping. And the king did it. And he called the three young men so that they can join the other people to dedicate this God of King Nebuchadnezzar. And this is what these young men said. We will not worship this thing because he commanded that everyone should worship the God that Nebuchadnezzar made. So these young men, they told these people that we are not going to serve that God. We are not going to bow before your created God. So he sent messengers and he said, tell the young men that whenever they hear voices, they hear sound lifted, they should all bow down to worship the thing that the king had made the God. So this time came and they sent a message to the king and they said, king, oh God, oh king, live forever. Let me get this verse that will flow together. In Daniel 3, Fourteen, verse 14 in the third chapter. Take a stand, Zamba, 14. Good. Good. This verse. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? The next verse. Now, if you are, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the own, flute, harp, la, and satri, in Simon, with all kinds of music, and you shall fall down and worship the image which I have made good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hand? You see, now these are the threats that the king declared to the, to the young men. And he told them, if you do not bow and worship my golden image, then this is going to happen to you. The fire was set. Seven times hotter than it is normal. Then the, la the next verse is this. Let's move to the next verse. Where the, the three Hebrew men spoke to the king. So these men, they told, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. See now. I got something from this. When you know yourself, what we've read in the book of John chapter 1 verse 12. The Bible says, Let me just read, let me just paraphrase it. The last part of the verse says, All they that, okay, but many as have received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe. Now, if you have believed in God, you yourself, not we ourselves, if you have believed in God, then the Bible says, He has given you power to become His child. He has given you power. He has given, there is a portion God has given you as a child of God. And now, once you know that I got that portion as a child of God, you know who you are, and you know how to walk, and you know how to talk, and you know the kind of people you share with. Because you know, I have the power. Jesus Christ died for me. He chose me, and he has made me. Then you know who you are, and you know how to. You see now, 
these are, these are mere men speaking to the king. Telling the king, oh king, live forever. But for this image that you've made for us, we will not. <laughs> Actually, they said, we do not, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Who would respond that to a king? I have no need to answer you in this matter. I know who I am. I know I am in God. I know God is in me. Once you know that, you know that the authority, God has given you the authority to be his child. So God's portion, as the scripture says, that we are seated in Christ Jesus with the Father in the heavenly places. You know I am that person. I am strong. Nothing can tune me because I know where I am. Praise the Lord. So there's those who be, uh, let's go back to our reading. Daniel. The next verse. 16, yes. We have no need to answer you in this matter. The next verse, Zamba. If that is the case. Now look here. They have told the king. They actually, they've spoken straight to the king. We have no need to answer you in this matter. And in that case, our God whom we serve is able to save. Now, if you king, you are not content by us, not bowing to your image. We have a God in heaven who we serve and he will deliver us. But if he, even if he is not going to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, we know that our God will also deliver us from your hand. Praise the Lord. But if not, let it be known to you, O king. Even if, even if I will still remain in my situation, even if you, king, you still throw us into the fire and you will burn, we still believe in our God. You see this verse? If not, now this is, if, even if God will not deliver us from the fire, be it known to you that you will not bow to your golden image. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods forever. Nor will we worship the gold image which you have set. You see, because they knew their God. And they knew they'd been chosen. So that was my very first point. We know that we've been chosen. I know I have authority. I know I have the power. Power that has made me a child of God. Praise the Lord. Now, these young men, they were speaking straight to the king. So when you are in Christ Jesus, God makes you to stand out. In the midst of a big crowd, God selects and God causes you to stand out. If you've known who you are, if Christ Jesus lives in and dwells in the inside of you, and you've known that I have that power, Christ Jesus will separate and make you stand out. Praise the Lord. Let's move to the next verse, Zamba. Now this is after, after he has shared and he's talked to them that we will not, we will not, we will not, we will not. Then the king, the Bible says, he burnt in fury. He was so mad. The king has, you guys, you are talking, you know who you're talking to. Imagine, these are young men who are talking to a king. And they've, they've, they've spoken to him, they've told him, oh, what you've read. Then the king, full of fury, and the expression of his face changed towards Shendrak. Now, remember, in chapter 2, let me you, take you a bit back. The king had a dream. When the king had a dream, he woke up in the morning. But what he remembered is that he had a dream. This is funny. He had a dream. He remembers he had a dream, but he do not understand the dream. And he cannot remember anything in the dream. So now, he commanded all the witches, the wise, the, sorcerer, the sorcerers, the wise men in the kingdom. And he told them, come, come together. Give me a dream that I dreamt. So they were Asking the king, give us the dream then. <laughs> the king told them, I had a dream. Tell me the dream. Give me the interpretation of the dream. That is funny. Now these guys were crying. Give us then the dream. Then we interpret it. So this, the king thought, these guys are joking with me. So he, say, he, he gave a command. Let all of them be killed from the kingdom. And when the, way, the word went out, Daniel of had, and he asked, he inquired. And then he went. He asked, actually, God gave him a favor before the king and he said, give me three days. I will inquire the dream and I will give it in the interpretation. Now the king, I think the king had forgotten. The three young men plus Daniel took time. They prayed and God gave Daniel the interpretation. So the king forgot about it. So 
a time will come and God will cause you to be remembered. It came a time when Daniel interpreted the dream in chapter 2. The king spoke so many blessings because he agreed, yes, that was the dream. So he promoted Daniel and Daniel took this young man as his assistant in the, gov in the government of the, the time, in the province. Because Daniel was promoted as a governor into the, gov into the province. Praise the Lord. So now, the king said, this man must die. Because he have refused to bow to my golden image. He gave the command. And when you read, you find what happened. The fire was set. The men were, were thrown into the fire. Then when the... <laughs> The men that threw these guys into the fire, the Bible says they were burnt. Actually, they were consumed by the fire. But when the king looked into the fire, he saw four men walking in the fire. The Bible says, and the fourth man looked like the son of God. So the king commanded and said, let this man be taken out of the fire. Praise the Lord. I hope you are flowing together. Then when the king commanded the men to be brought out outside, brought out from the fire, he said, these are the words he said. Let's go to verse 28. When you stay in God, when you stay in Christ, he will prepare an audience for you. You know, sometimes you get to a point of ni meongea sana about ni meokoka. Jueni ni meokoka, mimi ni meokoka, mimi ni meokoka. It gets to a point you keep quiet and you let God cause people speak about you. And that is what my prayer is. That a time will come. Because God has prepared us. He will also prepare an audience for you. And people shall say. Actually people shall give testimonies about you. People that you've not given them testimony. People will say. I know and I know so and so is working with God. Praise the Lord. And that is what, has, what happened in verse 28. Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying. Blessed, now this is after he has observed what has happened. The God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who set his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him, and they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies, that they should not serve nor worship any God except their own God. Next verse. Therefore, now listen to this. I make a decree that any people national language, which speaks anything amiss, anything against the God of this young man shall be cut into pieces. Look at what has happened. Because of the decision of the three young men that they have made. Actually, a very risky decision. A very, it's risking one's life. Faith. Someone said faith is risking one's life. This young man made a very risky decision. And they argued with the king. And they said, let it be known. We are not going to answer in this matter. Thieves. <laughs> there was a standoff between three mere men and a king. Then there was a contest of fire. Then the fire brought, off, <laughs> brought out the winners, which was the three young men. So the king said, from today, in my nation, anyone that does not worship the God of these three young men shall be cut into pieces. Their houses shall be made an ass heap. Because there is no other God. Look at, look at the man that is saying these words. There is no other God. This, remember, this is King Nebuchadnezzar. Who had already made an idol to be worshipped. There is no other God who can deliver like this God of these young men. Tonight, tonight, remember, if you are holding on God, remember, it is not in vain. Keep on walking. Keep on walking. Strengthen yourself from the inside. From the ins Sometimes you lack someone to encourage you. Sometimes there is no one to tell you, brother, let's keep on moving. Brother, take heart. Sometimes it will not happen. Encourage. David encouraged himself in the Lord. And he continued. So my brethren tonight, let us encourage ourselves. Because a time will come. A time will come. And the God that you serve will manifest himself. A God that you've lived for this many years. This few years will manifest himself to you and to the nation. And people will say these words. I know from today there is a God in the life of Dominic. A God that needs to be loved. A God that needs to be served. Praise the Lord. 
when you continue walking with him, please do not give up. That's my conclusion. When you continue walking with God and do not give up, there are so many benefits. And some of these benefits we've read. In chapter 2, Daniel was promoted. When we live with God, when we walk with God, there are so many. Someone used to say, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, when you surrender your life to God, even if there is no heaven to go, there is a life that we live here on earth which is good. And it is true. When you are born again, there are so many things that God separates you from. Kuna vitu mingi sana utafanya sababu umeokoka. Hata kama uendi binguni. Hata kama, though there is heaven. But there are so many things that God separates us. Mungu anakuondoa tu. Anakuondoa because you've chosen and born again. I don't go, I don't do, I don't speak this way. There are so many things that God will separate you from. There is long life. When you love God, when you live in him, when you dwell in the presence of God, you will live long. Praise Jesus. There is life to enjoy when you are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. There are promotions. When we walk with God, there are promotions. Look at the three young men. It was like a big crusade what they did that night, that day. Actually, they, now the king spoke on their behalf. And he had a crusade. That to, from tonight, it is the God of these young men we worshipped in my nation. A big crusade because of a decision the three young men did. They decided we will not, we will not. And then from their decision, God showed himself up through them. Because they purposed. This life, I no longer live. But the life that I live, I live by faith. Praise Jesus. It is not my own. But the life I live, I live for Christ. And it is by faith. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So tonight, let's continue walking. And let's desire to live and to dwell in the presence of the Lord. To continue serving him. You know, we find a lot of joy when we serve the Lord. When you do not serve. But when we serve the Lord, there is a lot of joy. There is encouragement when you serve the Lord. And no giving up when we serve the Lord. So the Lord God bless you tonight. And may he continue encouraging you. May you continue speaking to your life and may be involved in all your ways. In Jesus' name. Let's be on our feet.